ES Audio. Hello, I'm Mark Blunden, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, North Korea's nuclear counterattack drill, but first. Scientists are examining links between what's known as Earth's lost city of hydrothermal systems and oceans found across the solar system on moons orbiting Jupiter. Scientists from Germany's Max Planck Institute for Marine Microbiology say they found a new species of bacteria that's thriving in hot springs billowing from the Antarctic and Arctic seabeds. And these bacteria can handle living by vents that pump out either oxygen or hydrogen. Now there's considerable excitement over a potential link with evidence from NASA's Cassini probe mission, which previously studied Saturn and its moons and found similar hydrogen jets erupting from one of the moon's south poles. Now astronomers hope that a fresh look at the two sets of data will help broaden their understanding of how alien organisms live across the cosmos. Next. A report by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has set out some of the most comprehensive evidence yet on the dangers of global warming. Dr Ella Gilbert, a polar climate scientist from the British Antarctic Survey, tells us about her conversations with locals during a recent visit to Svalbard in the Arctic archipelago, where she saw glaciers melting. A few decades ago, in winter, the bay in front of the town used to freeze over completely. You could take your snowmobile or your sled and go straight over the fjord to the other side. And now the sea ice just doesn't form there. It's not strong enough to take the weight of a, of a sled anymore. She also explained the link between ice caps melting and devastating wildfires thousands of miles away. As climate is warming, essentially, we're getting warmer temperatures. And also another effect is that you get more extreme snowfall and rainfall, which means that you go for longer periods where there's no snowfall or rainfall. And that drought and that dryness contributes and adds fuel to allow wildfires to take place. Now, North Korea's state news agency reports that leader Kim Jong-un has supervised two days of drills simulating a nuclear counter-attack, including the firing of a ballistic missile carrying a mock nuclear warhead. Reportedly, this missile flew nearly 500 miles and reached an altitude of over 2,600 feet. It comes as South Korea and US forces also continue their own military exercises called Freedom Shield. Space scientists suggest aliens could be hiding in what are described as Terminator zones on distant planets where the conditions are neither too hot nor too cold, but just right. Astronomers from the University of California, Irvine, discovered these exoplanets have a band around them which may be able to hold liquid water, which is a key ingredient for life. So why are they called Terminator Zones? No, it's not an Arnie reference, because inside the Terminator is the dividing line between the exoplanet's dayside and nightside. But the mystery continues, as any water would be likely frozen solid on the cold night side of the planets, which is some 1,400 light years away, but the day side would be so hot that the water would evaporate. Some of the world's leading makers of flu vaccines say they could make hundreds of millions of bird flu shots for humans within months if a new strain of avian influenza ever jumps across the species divide. GSK and Moderna are among the manufacturers that tell Reuters they are already developing or about to test sample human vaccines that much better match the circulating subtype of bird flu as a precautionary measure against a future pandemic. One current H5N1 outbreak killed record numbers of birds and infected mammals, but human cases are rare and global health officials have said the risk of transmission between humans is still low. Let's go to the ads. Stay there for more news from the world of tech and science. Plus, it's the world's largest Ferris wheel. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. Mobile phones across Britain will be sent a new siren-like danger alert next month as the government tests its new public warning system, which is now operational. 
It allows the government and emergency services to send urgent messages warning the public of life-threatening events such as floods. The message will appear on home screens of people's devices during the test with a vibration and a loud warning sound for 10 seconds, even if the phone set to silent. The test is expected to take place in the early evening of the 23rd of April, and phone users will have to acknowledge the alert before they can go back to their devices. You've probably never heard of the ground-dwelling night parrot, but what gives this Australian outback creature the edge in the dark? Well, paleontologists at Flinders University say the bird's wonky skull and big ears help to counterbalance its limited eyesight. They analysed a night parrot fossil specimen from London's Natural History Museum using high-res CT scanning technology. The elusive nocturnal parrot is so rare, it was only photographed for the first time in 2013 after eight decades of outback expeditions failed to find a surviving population. And finally, never mind our London eye, because engineers want to build the world's largest spokeless Ferris wheel in Seoul by 2025. It's planned to measure nearly 600 feet high with stainless steel pods for viewing over the South Korean capital, making it around 150 feet higher than the London eye here in the capital. Seoul's own wheel, which will have 36 pods each with enough room for 25 people, is also set to beat the current largest Ferris wheel in the world, which resides in Shandong, China. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader Podcast, bringing you the latest news, interviews and analysis from the Evening Standard here in London. And we'll be back on Tuesday at 1pm. See you then.